Washington, D.C. and film uh, a public television talk show with a famous talk show host uh, there in D.C. On, the, on PBS. Very exciting opportunity for us. And then we start over in New England. Uh, we're, we're, Tony Zamboni, struct, uh, structural engineer, he's actually a mechanical engineer who does mostly structural work. He and I will be teaching a group of a couple of hundred civil engineers at the New Jersey Institute of, New Jersey Institute of Technology in Newark. Uh, this is uh, the first time we've actually had civil engineers, many of which are structural, uh, that we'll be showing Building 7 to. We'll wow. be showing how it comes down as fast as a bowling ball uh, off the side of the tower with no resistance from those columns. Uh, we'll be asking them to think, can fire do this? Fire is an organic process, moves through the building every 20 minutes or so, and this building is fireproof, fully wow. fireproof. It couldn't even get hot enough <laughs> to sag or fail in any respect. Uh, so everybody knows once they start looking at the evidence like these civil engineers are going to do in New Jersey. And uh, hopefully we'll get most of them uh, signed up onto our petition as well. Uh, but then we take this film uh, to 10 cities in New England, uh, Woodstock, New York, uh, Southampton, uh, Port Portsmouth, Maine, well, Hanover. We'll be at Dartsmouth College. That's going to be Dartmouth. so exciting. You're actually having to teach a class to teach people how to think about this reality. Uh, well, Richard Gage, thank you so much for being <laughs> in studio. Exciting. Thanks, Leanne. Find out more AE911truth.org and beyondmisinformation.org. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. And why wearing a Hillary for President t-shirt might get you punched in the face. They thought it said Hillary for President. He said, I was seconds away from sending my bar back over here to, to punch you in the face. Since you're wearing a Hillary for prison shirt, you don't have to buy drinks here. Everything's on the house. Hillary for prison. Hillary's not surging, I tell you that. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. Thank you. Have a Donald Trump endorses Hillary for prison. Get your Hillary for prison 2016 t-shirt at the InfoWars store. And on the back, it says legalize freedom. Show your disapproval of Hillary by buying your t-shirt today. But what she's done is criminal. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Despite strong opposition, the mandatory vaccine legislation SB 277 was signed into law earlier this year in California. This requires virtually all California school children to be vaccinated in order to attend school without exception. Now, recently, a massive referendum push uh, to repeal this law fell short of the signatures needed uh, to put this issue on the ballot. Now, parents there are facing court orders to get their children vaccinated, as well as visits from Child Protective Services. And many parents might not even be aware of the fact that their children have been entered into a vaccine tracking system. Joining me now is independent journalist, researcher, and writer Jeffrey Jackson of jeffreyjackson.com. Welcome back to the show. Now, talk to me. A lot of discouraged families out there, they feel like they have lost the opportunity to fight this uh, removal of medical consent. And now a lot of families facing some difficult decisions. Yeah, in California, the referendum, unfortunately, did not get enough signatures. So the political process in California is not going to be the answer, uh, nor was it maybe ever the answer. So, you know, I, I think it's time that that parents perhaps look at Martin Luther King's 
Jr. example of civil disobedience. And uh, we're looking at now vaccine tracking systems that are sending letters to children in Indiana and New York. And I've, I've had reports as well of other other parents getting these letters for their child to get vaccinated. Uh, and these parents weren't even aware that their children were in a tracking system. Um, looking at that tracking system, it's called the IIS, the Immunization Information System. And every state has one of these. And the parents have the choice to opt out of this. And according to its own website, the IIS's own website, and uh, the parents also must be notified if their child is going to get put on this. So what we're having is we're having a referendum that failed, and now we're, we're seeing another another push, another push in California um, to really hammer this down. And in addition to that, uh, at the beginning of the 2015 school year in California, uh, Latino mothers filed a complaint because their children were being pulled out of school and not uh, on the first day in mass at the uh, L.A. County uh, School District and told they can't come to school unless they have their vaccines. Now, this is a violation because SB 277 does not start till July 2016. Right. Absolutely. And so you so sort of point out how this is something that's going to be obviously starting in California. But this this rhetoric uh, they are politically to sort of steamroll this use of medical consent nationwide is 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 on its way. They've been uh, putting this type of wording there, uh, the vaccine, National Vaccine Advisory Committee, um, and this immun immunization information system. This is 1997. You're going all the way back to. Um, so now, talk to me a little bit about what parents should be expecting with these vaccine. Uh, notices. They're basically saying, hey, it's time you should be going and getting that uh, vaccine. It's highly recommended. And I know that soon these recommendations could potentially turn into a CPS visit, uh, something like as drastic as that. So talk to us a little bit about what parents should be expecting with these notifications and how to opt out. Well, if, if you're a parent and you decided not to vaccinate your child, the, questions, the question stands, why is your child at that point in a vaccine registry system for the state? Um, to me, that seems like you're asking for trouble, given, given the atmosphere of what's happening in California and the United States right now. So the first thing parents should look for is these letters will start coming, and these are, these are strongly advising their children to get vaccinated. But moving forward, uh, the Orange County Department of Education's legal division uh, has interpreted the law, SB 277, has interpreted what to do with non-vaccine compliers. And the way SB 277 is written is it's, it's, it leaves up enforcement to the individual school district. So you have a lot of districts that are going to be working, not centralized. They're going to kind of really be doing their own thing. Um, and Orange County was the first to go on record to say, well, possibly we could call we could ask for CPS visits or get court orders to vaccinate these children once this law goes into play. So you can kind of see, that's a look behind the curtain, in my opinion, you can kind of see what, where they're going with this. So the time, the time to start thinking about what to do is right now. There are two rallies, um, you know, continuing to get support. We have one year, uh, less than one year till SB 277 goes into play in California. So there's, there's a rally on October 24th at the CDC and then also uh, on 1010, the Million Man March, uh, Justice or else, they've claimed that they're going to march in the CDC as well uh, on behalf of the black children that um, what Dr. William Thompson, the CDC whistleblower, claimed that saw 300 percent increase in autism that were essentially thrown out of the study. So um, really, civil disobedience, in my opinion, is the answer. Um, in, in 1912, there's a, you can go back and search the old newspaper clippings. In 1912, the uh, smallpox outbreak forced schools to man give mandatory vaccination laws to the children in New York and California, very similar to what's going on right now. And what happened on the first day of school, because there's a lot of backlash from parents even back then, what happened on the first day of school in Olean, o -E, I'm sorry, O-L-E-A-N, New York, <clears throat> the entire school of 2,000 children 1,800 kids walked out on the first day and didn't show up. So we have forms of civil disobedience when it comes to this already on the books and already in historical format. So that might be how, how it plays out is you have three, 400,000 parents just not show, have the kids show up the first day and it becomes a national or international issue. 
Absolutely. And that's one of the big things that they're pushing all of these ID cards for kids and uh, getting their biometric data to make sure they're getting on the school bus and things like that because they're receiving money for each child that's there in the school. So they really don't want your child to be missing a day of school. So I, I think this is a, a way almost to scare parents to say, well, we're sorry, you're just going to have to homeschool your kids if you don't get them vaccinated. And you're right. What happens if hundreds of thousands of families decide, well, fine, we're not going to send our kids to your school, even though that might be a little bit difficult for a time. Uh, sometimes you have to put yourself in that uncomfortable position in order to get results, especially with the way uh, we see our government sort of slogging along. Um, now, briefly, just talk to me a little bit about this, uh, the plans over the next five years with the Healthy People 2020 initiative. Yes, that's by the federal government. It's an initiative to increase immunizations. Um, they're looking at a minimum of 80% uh, and in some categories, 90% across the entire vaccine schedule, which is growing every year, uh, to immunize the entire United States with an 80 to 90% rate. So again, we have this herd mentality, this herd immunity, um, uh, false notion that's being pushed across the board. Uh, the, the pharmaceutical companies, the drug houses stand to make untold billions of dollars off of this. And what's interesting is the Government Accountability Office did a, did a study in 2014 on the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, which has paid out over three, almost four billion now in injuries to children. Um, and they said, I'm going to pull it up on my site right here so I can read directly from it. They said that this is the government talking that's pushing these vaccines. A vaccine can have severe side effects, including death or injury, requiring lifetime medical care. So you have the government out of one mouth saying this, and then out the other side, you have them saying, we need 90% vaccine coverage rate for the flu or for HPV. And it's also me, it's also for the compensation program. Uh, that's the only way you can have retribution if your child or you get injured. You have to go through this compensation program. And you can only get uh, compensation if uh, your, uh, your issues, your ill health issues that came from the vaccine are on a list that they give. So what's important to know is some vaccines that they're pushing don't have a list, don't have options on there. So if you get the HPV vaccine or you get some new vaccines that come out that aren't compensatable, then you're kind of, you're kind of screwed. Wow. I mean, that's just frightening because, yeah, we see it happening in California. And this is the, the laws are being written now on the books to push this nationwide. So it really is the time for us to stand up uh, and fight this, like you say, if it's going to take a little bit of, of civil disobedience. Now, I know that you give parents uh, some steps to take on your website, jeffreyjackson.com, under the article, is removing your child from a vaccine tracking system an option? I suggest everyone go there and read that article, get more information um, on this as well. Uh, but thank you so much, Jeffrey, for all that you're continuing to do. And um, please follow up with us on this today's su Supreme Court decision where they, they're making it tougher for parents to be able to challenge that California vaccine law saying it doesn't violate your child's rights. So, yes. Yes. all right. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching the show tonight. We'll see you here again tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. Infowarslife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these and it just is really clean restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. 
and it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.